Crest the Spites from Hail Planetarium, and welcome to our second virtual star party. We're going to begin tonight looking towards the south. And in the south, we've got the bright moon. You can see it's close to first quarter tonight, which is a great time to observe it just in time for International Observe the Moon Night, which I will post uh, links to activities you can do on our Facebook page. Right next to the moon, we've got Saturn and Jupiter. The brightest star that you'll, you'll see if you look in the south is Jupiter. And then the one closer to the moon, which is also pretty bright, is Saturn. And these are close to our teapot constellation. So you can see the handle of the teapot here. This is Sagittarius. Here's the top, and here's the spout, the body of the, here's the body of the teapot. Spout, top, handle. This is Sagittarius. It's a, um, an asterism, which is part of the constellation Sagittarius. I talked about that um, in our August uh, star show. And coming like steam out of the teapot, you can faintly see the Milky Way. But let's take a look at Jupiter first. Turn our telescopes towards Jupiter. I'm going to zoom in on it. You can see tonight at nine o'clock, all four of the Galilean moons are visible. Now, when I was um, looking at the moon, it, when I was observing and getting the pictures for this star show, um, the moons were in different places. So let's go back to that date when I saw them. I observed on the 15th, and now we have to zoom back out, find Jupiter again. All right, so here's Jupiter. Center on that, zoom in, you can see Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto, and they're on the other side of, of Jupiter. And look! You can see that beautiful red spot. Oh, and there's Io sitting out in front of it. And this here, that, that dot here, which makes it look like it has a face, doesn't it? You've got Io. This is the shadow from Io, and there's, there's the mouth <laughs> um, at the end of our observing session. By that time, Io had actually come around, and we could see Io right next to the moon. That right next to Jupiter. You want to see my pictures through the telescope? There we go. This um, bright star, that's Jupiter, and then you have our three moons. Those are Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto. Now, the order that they are um, from Jupiter oh, to remember which one's closest and which one's farthest away it's I eat green cheese or green carrots Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto so Callisto's the furthest one out um, Io's the closest Europa, Europa's the second and Gany Ganymede's the third in our picture um, as far as you know looking at a, a line view, Ganymede appears to be the closest to uh, Jupiter in our image. And um, Ganymede is bigger than Mercury. It's the largest moon in our solar system. Uh, it's a pretty fun moon. Now, um, Europa, 
Grumpa is covered in ice. And uh, have you ever looked at a um, frozen lake? And you kind of see those cracks where the water where it broke up and then froze over again. Europa's surface looks just like that. Uh, and underneath the surface, it's got this ocean, uh, ocean of water, and it's um, some places. It's got some geysers that, that spray the water out. So Jupiter is pretty cool. Now, I, I took some closer pictures too. Here, which was, this was my first time I, that I can remember seeing the great red spot. I really, uh, really enjoyed being able to observe. So thank you guys for giving me the excuse to get outside and look up. Um, here's another picture. You can see the great red spot there. I've got a few of them. And also Ganymede, you can see. I'm not sure, but maybe this dark spot right here is Io. That would be cool if I got a picture of uh, the moon is as well. There's another. I, I took a bunch of pictures of Jupiter because it was so amazing. And as time goes on, I'll get better at, at getting clearer pictures. Okay, this one's upside down. But here's the red spot. And you can see that dark spot, which I'm thinking is is Io. Because it, it's in the right place. There it is again, and the red spot. Oh, look, you can also see the bands, the cloud bands on Jupiter. See those dark and light bands? Um, those, are, if I zoom in on Jupiter again, you can, you see these bands here and the lighter ones? These are di different chemicals um, make up the different colors. And you can see those bands in my picture. All right, let's move on. Zoom back out, and we gotta move over to Saturn. We'll zoom in. This is what Saturn looked like. Here's a picture in my, from looking through the telescope. You can, now when Galileo first saw Saturn, his telescope was small and it was very blurry and it was kind of elongated and he said it looked like it was a planet with ears. I can kind of see that in my blurry images. I like this picture. This picture is, you can, you can start to see um, the gap in the rings here. A few more pictures of Saturn. Here we go. This one's better. You can see the gap on the other side now. I also experimented with different, different filters um, in, in the eyepiece to bring out different, um, to help bring out the features of the planet. So that's why it has a, a greenish tint. Okay, now, uh, those are my pictures of, uh, of the planets. Okay. So, we move on. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to go back to the 25th. And, alright, here's the moon. So we've got, so here we are back in the south. We've got Sagittarius here, the Milky Way. We're going to move over towards the east. So we're turning towards the east. 
Remember how last time we looked at the summer triangle? We're going to look at that again. Um, now here in the east, right on the horizon, you've got a um, bright red star. That's Mars. It was too low for me to be able to observe at this time, but next time I'll get it. I'll try to get it next time. Now we're going to go up from Mars, and in the east, we've got these four bright stars. Okay, now we saw last time the summer triangle, so what do you think this is? It's another asterism, and it's kind of turned sideways. This is called, no, not the summer square, it's called the great square, because astronomers have all sorts of uh, great imagination. <laughs> um, but it kind of looks like a baseball diamond. Um, or, I mean, it's kind of squarish, tilted. This is part of Pegasus. So I'll zoom out a little bit. Pegasus is a flying horse. This is his body. He's got a head up here and then some feet going down from the side. It's only the front half of the horse. And then some wings up here that usually aren't connected by the lines when you, when you draw, um, when you see the constellation lines drawn up. Coming up from the back of Pegasus is Andromeda, and that's what we're going to look at tonight. So Andromeda, so we've got our great square here. We're going to look, um, you take, come down, take this far left star, and there's a set of two stars, a wider set of two stars, and then a third, even wider set. This is Andromeda, Andromeda the princess. So here's her head, shoulders, waist, feet. Kind of looks like a, um, a, a horn coming out, but that's Andromeda. Now, if you take these two stars, this, the second set of two stars, and draw a line between them and go up about that same distance and just to the left of that, you see that there's a little, little fuzzy spot on top of my pointer and click on this. This is actually the Andromeda galaxy. It's the most distant thing you can see in the night sky without using a telescope. And it's actually dark enough at Big Bone Lick State Historic Site that you can see it yourself there. And I am uh, grateful to do this, these um, star parties in partnership with, with Big Bone Lick. When the world opens up again, we'll be able to uh, go out and be on site with our telescope, our, our telescopes at, at Big Bone Lick. And that'll be nice again, because it's got fairly dark skies, um, dark enough that we can see the Andromeda galaxy. It looks like a fuzzy, looks like a fuzzy spot in the sky. And in order to see it, you have to use averted vision. Averted vision is when you look off to the, you, you look not with the center of your eye, but with the side of your eye. So you kind of look all around it and then you can pick it up. So that's Andromeda. Now, in Andromeda, um, that, that's the Andromeda Galaxy. Just above it, and about over here, we've got NGC N662, which I know is your favorite. Let's see if we can find it. So here it is, just above um, the, well, it, it's kind of close to the Andromeda Galaxy, and left of our um, star in the, the great square. I'm going to zoom in on it. This is also known as the blue snowball. It's a planetary nebula. So we're going to zoom in on this. We're going to zoom in a lot because it's very small. Isn't it cute? It's blue and round. And I have a picture of it. That's what it looks like in our telescope. If you had come, you could have seen that. 
Oh, well, if we could have done it in person. Um, if you, you could have looked through the telescope and, and seen that for yourself. Let's look again. You can even see, kind of see, the lines in the center. Now, a planetary nebula is what's left of a dying star about the size of our sun. So when a star the size of our sun runs out of fuel, what it does is it puffs off its outer atmosphere, and what's left is a small, the core in the center, that's known as a, a white dwarf, and then you've got the atmosphere that's puffed off and surrounding it. And, um, and that's a planetary nebula. So that's what we're looking at when we look at the Blue Snowball Nebula, or NGC 7662. Next, we have another planetary nebula. Now for this, we're going to move out, zoom back out, so we can see our uh, great, um, great square again. Okay, so here we are um, with Andromeda here in our great square. We're going to go, um, let's go back to where the moon is. So south, we've got, um, I'm going to zoom in a bit. Okay, here's Sagittarius or teapot and it pours the Milky Way out, we're going to move up the Milky Way to the top of the sky where we see three stars. You remember what we talked about last time with our, um, our asterisms? This is another asterism. It is, um, it's our summer triangle very high in the sky. So we've got our summer triangle. And um, in this constellation of Lyra, we've got the ring nebula. Now we looked at it last time, but I looked at it again uh, this time and got some better pictures of it. So um, let's find the ring nebula. So here we are. If we I can zoom in on it. So here's what it looks like in Stellarium. And here's what it looks like through the telescope. See that little ring? This is another planetary nebula. So this little ring is the ring nebula. It's a really, it's a fun thing to see. So we'll zoom back out and until we can see our summer triangle again. We have to zoom out a lot, right? Here's Lyra. We're going to now look at um, Cygnus. Cygnus the swan. So we have Deneb, tail. Here's the tail of the swan. Here's the wings coming here the body, the neck, and the head. So the head of, of Cygnus the Swan is called Alberio. Now Alberio is really neat because it's not one star, it's two. As we zoom in, notice how they start to separate? You've actually got two stars here and Hey, check out my picture. Look, it's even clearer in my picture than it is in, um, on the Stellarium. They're different colors. The different colors are uh, mean that the stars are different temperatures. So we've got a yellow star and a blue one. Which one? Which one do you think is hotter? the yellow or the blue. 
the blue one is actually hotter. So um, there's so so these are are it's a double star. Um, we are not sure if they're actually close together in space or if they're at um, different distances. There's some people think different things about that, but um, there are some some double stars that are binary stars and they orbit a common center of mass so they're going around about going around each other now there are some binary stars that are so close that even when you use a telescope you cannot tell that there are two stars there I mean it, it looks like a single star some of these are um, so you've got two stars the the size of the Sun they're so close that they orbit each other every 10 hours they share an atmosphere. Those are pretty cool telescopes. Now, um, excuse me, not telescopes. Those are cool stars. Um, we can tell that there are actually two stars there because what we do is we look at the amount of light that comes out. And when the two stars are next to each other in space, they're both showing all of their light. But when one star or the other star um, blocks, you know, one star blocks, um, when you have the star, one, one star being blocked, the light from one star, you'll have less light coming out. So we look at and see how the amount of light changes over time, and we can figure out that there are two stars there. So this is Alberio. And uh, now the hot star is actually the blue one. So it's the opposite of, um, so when we see red, right, like um, red on our faucet, our water faucet, that's hot and blue is cold. But with stars, the opposite is true. And think about fire, right? Blue fire is hotter than um, red fire. Um, yeah, so, so the blue star is actually hotter than the yellow golden one. Now these are our um, pictures for um, th that I have. This is our star show. This time I will leave you with a, a few more pictures of the night sky. In a little bit, some of my um, some of some of the best ones that I oh no I have one more one more thing to show you ah there's Saturn you can see a really nice picture of Saturn and this this is M103 we're gonna go back towards the east okay so we we're here in the south we're gonna go over to the east. I almost forgot about this one. This is at the opposite side of um, stellar evolution from um, the planetary nebulae. Okay, so I've, I zoom out and here's my, um, here's Pegasus. Here's our great square with Andromeda. We're gonna go up and over a little bit. You see this W? This W is Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is the mother of Andromeda. And in Cassiopeia, we've got M103. This is a Messier object, and it's an open star cluster. I'll zoom in and show it to you. So this, um, there's a big cloud of, of dust and gas, and it collapsed down and formed stars, uh, formed a bunch of stars all close together in space. And over time, they'll eventually go their separate ways, but for, um, but for now, they're all close together. And look, here, here it is. You can see, um, my picture, you've got a bunch of stars, and it's actually quite similar. Um, I 
except for flipped because it was taken with um, the, the view in the telescope is, is flipped. Because it's a, a, we've got a mirror. Um, yeah, so here is an open star cluster in the constellation of Cassiopeia. Stay tuned because our next star talk will feature the story of Andromeda and Cassiopeia. And, um, and Cassiopeia's husband, Cepheus. Okay, until next time. Bye!